who talks about that is Jazakallah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa kafa. Wa salatin, wa salaman ala nabiyyihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd, qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shahru Ramadan al-lazhi hunzila fi dhul Qur'an, hudan lil-nas, wa bayinatin min al-hiba wa al-Qur'an. Salat Allah al-Azim. Okay, yesterday, uh, there were many of you anyway, but um, we talked about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this month of Ramadan as a practical training to acquire and attain taqwa, righteousness. Okay, we talked about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed fasting. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. So Allah subhanahu wa taala has prescribed fasting as a practical training program for all of us to acquire and attain taqwa righteousness. So essentially, we are on a 29 or 30 day training program. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us on a 29 to 30 day training program to acquire taqwa. Today we're going to look at um, something else which is closely connected with the month of Ramadan. Okay? And that is anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, we must refrain and protect ourselves from anger during the month of Ramadan. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in the hadith that the month of Ramadan is Shahrul Muwasat. Shahrul Muwasat. This is a month of sympathy and cooperation with one another. Okay? So we should therefore avoid anger and sins that are committed during fits of anger. E.g. quarreling, exchange of heated words, abusing one another with foul language. These are common practices when a person is angry. In a hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has gone to the extent by saying, وَإِنْ جَهِلَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدِكُمْ وَإِنْ جَهِلَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدِكُمْ جَاهِلٌ وَهُوَ صَائِمٌ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ If anyone was to behave with you indecently or rudely and you are in the state of fasting, then say that I am fasting. I am fasting, end of conversation. Okay. And Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala has narrated that the Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, مَن لَمْ يَلَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهْلِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدَعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Whosoever does not abandon falsehood in speech, and acting on it and behaving with ignorance then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for him to abandon his food or drink فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدَعَ طُعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for him to abandon his food and drink in the commentary I was reading today in the commentary of this hadith the muhaddithin have said that if a person was to engage in falsehood, in speech, and acting on it, and behaving with ignorance, that the muhaddithin in the commentary of this hadith have mentioned, لا قيمة لصومه, then there is no value with his fast. There is no value with his fast. And they have further stated, ولا يصلح أن يقدم إلى الله هذا الصوم المجروح. Okay. They have further mentioned that it is not worthy that this fast, when the person has remained engaged okay, in falsehood, in speech and acting on it and behaving with ignorance, if a person has kept this type of fast, then this type of fast is not worthy of being presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us all from anger 
and everything that is associated with anger. We all know and we are all aware, okay, in the state of anger, we have no control over our tongue, we have no control over our actions, okay, friendships are severed, okay, relationships are severed, just because we have not had control over our anger. And this is not just for the month of Ramadan, okay, so we can practice it throughout the 29 to 30 days, and then obviously we can take it forward throughout the entire year, okay, um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from anger and everything associated with anger. We've been on today in Darabi, okay, we will be reciting the 24th portion. So 24th juice of the Quran will be recited. Yesterday, we recited the 23rd juice and we talked a little about, um, who was here? Can anyone remember what we talked about yesterday? I'm going to mention two things. I'm going to go over two points that we talked about yesterday and then move on today to the 24th juice, okay? Yesterday we uh, concentrated on Surah al Yasin, not the entire Surah al Yasin. We talked about, um, obviously we chose one Ruku and Fiqh al Sur, okay, where the Sur, the horn will be blown for the second time, okay, and everyone will be raised from their graves and they will walk towards the plains of resurrection. Then further on in that same Ruku, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Inna ashab al Jinnati liyawma fi shu'udin fatihun, okay, that the people of Jannah or engaged today in their activities, happily enjoying them. Okay. Now, there was a question that uh, in Jannah, there will be no religious duty. There will be no salah, there will be no hajj, there will, no, there will be no fasting, etc. Okay. Um, there is no job, no earning, no livelihood. So would a lack of activity not leave one uptight and, up and bored? There's nothing to do. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, inna ashab al jannati yawma fi shughulin fatihun, okay, has clarified that the principal activity, the principal activity of jannah is enjoyment. The principal activity of paradise and jannah is enjoyment. Okay? Inna ashab al jannati yawma fi shughulin fatihun. And then another thing that we talked about, which was new to me as well yesterday, I mean, uh, I'll be totally honest with you, I obviously we studied <coughs> tafsir, you know, you can go on studying tafsir for years of your life and you still wouldn't, you know, there's a, I can't remember off the top of my head who the Mufassir who, and who, who, who the Mufassir is, but he's written a, a, a tafsir, a commentary on the Quran, which is 40 volumes, okay, 40 volumes, you know, one of these shelves wouldn't be enough to contain all, all the books. So you can go on studying tafsir. So obviously, um, we studied tafsir uh, maybe 27 years ago in Jinnah, 27 years ago in the 90s, late 90s. Okay, and then obviously, I've never had the opportunity to teach it, etc. Okay, in Madrasa. And then, you know, you sporadically look at uh, the books of tafsir once in a while. You know, sometimes you come to the mosque early, Especially in London, I, I've not noticed it in many places in Preston, sometimes in London. The many times in London, you know, you go to the mosque early and most of the mosques, majority of the mosques, they have some sort of library within the prayer hall. Okay, so you pick up a book of the or you pick up a, some sort of book to read upon, okay, before Salah. So that's sporadic, okay, but to sit and, and to study uh, the Quran and the commentary of the Quran, the Tafsir of the Quran, Okay, this doesn't usually happen unless you're actually teaching it. So this bit uh, that uh, I mentioned and we talked about yesterday was uh, really interesting. Okay, um, uh, in Surah Al-Yaseen, Allah SWT has mentioned لَهُمْ فِيهَا فَاتِهَا وَلَهُمْ مَا يَدْعُونَ That they, were, they will have all types of fruits وَلَهُمْ مَا يَدْعُونَ And they will receive whatever they wish for and call for. Okay, and the Mufassir you have mentioned here, Yadda'oon, okay, is derived from the word da'wah, which means to call. Okay. So whatever a person in Jannah will call for, he will receive instantly, immediately. Okay, there will be no delay. And then the Mufassir, Mufassir have mentioned here, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not use the word yes'al? 
meaning ask for. Why did he use the word yad'awun, call for? Okay, so the Mufassirin have mentioned yas'alun, okay, the word yas'alun hasn't been used here by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when you've asked for something, you have to wait for it and then you receive it. So, in between asking and receiving, there's a little exertion. <coughs> and Jannah is free from all types of exertion. A person in Jannah will not have to exert himself to receive anything. Okay, that is why the word Allah SWT has used here is Yadda'ud. Whatever they will call for, they will receive. And not to use the word Yas'alun, where <coughs> there is an element of exertion that a person will have to wait and then he will receive. Okay, so that was yesterday. Moving on today, uh, we're just going to go through one or two ayat of the 24th Supara of the Surah Al-Zumur. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the following verse. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْلَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُومَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ All servants of mine, the translation is, all servants of mine who have acted recklessly against their own selves. Do not despair of Allah's mercy. Do not despair of Allah's mercy. Surely Allah will forgive all sins. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuma jami'a. Okay, Sayyidina Abbas anhu, commentating on this ayah, okay, mentions that there were some people who had killed a lot of people. They had killed a lot of people unjustly and committed a lot of shameful acts. So they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and submitted themselves. Okay? And they mentioned to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the religion that you are inviting us towards is no doubt very good. We have no problem with it. We are ready to accept and submit. However, we think about all the major sins that we have committed. We have already committed. Okay? And now if we are to become Muslims, do you have hope that our repentance will be accepted? So Allah Ta'ala revealed this verse in the Holy Quran, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? So, the outcome of this ayah, the outcome of this ayah is that before death arrives, Tawbah has to happen before death arrives at a person's door. Repentance made from sins no matter how serious. Okay, where they just oof, even disbelief, where they just shirk, ascribing of partners to Allah. Remember, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has mentioned in uh, in Surah Al-Nisa, Inna Allah la Inna Allah la yafsuru al yushka bihi wa yafsuru ma duna dalik li ma yashad. That Allah will not forgive any. I mean, Allah will forgive all types of sins. However, shirk, ascribing partners with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah will not forgive this. Okay. However, if a person sincerely repents, okay. Before death arrives at his door, even though he might have committed shirk, even though he might have committed kufr, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's a genuine tawbah, genuine repentance. All sins will be forgiven. Therefore, <coughs> the conclusion of this ayah is a person should not lose hope. A person should not lose hope. And I'm going to mention a hadith al Qudsi. Okay. Um, Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned Ya ibn Adam, inna kama da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ma kana laka ma kana minka wa la ubali O son of Adam, as long as you call upon me and ask from me, I shall forgive you for what you have done and I shall not mind Okay Ya ibn Adam, ya ibn Adam, law balagat dhunubuka anana al-sama Law balagat dhunubuka anana al-sama ثم استغفرتني غفرت لك يا بنا غفرت لك. Okay, that all son of Adam, even if your sins were to reach the clouds in the sky, and you ask me to forgive you, then I will still forgive. And then finally, يا بنا آدم إنك لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها بقرابها مغفرة. That O oh, son of Adam, were you to come with me, uh, were you to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and were you then to face me ascribing no partner to me, I would bring you forgiveness nearly 
as great as this. So this goes hand in hand with the ayah that we, we just mentioned. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar mentions that uh, the Quran, this verse of the Quran, brings the strongest, strongest message for the sinners. It's hope. It gives hope to the sinners. This ayah. قُلْ يَا عِلَالِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Okay? So, according to Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله عنه, this is the strongest message of hope for sinners. However, uh, uh, Sayyidina ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه, he differs. His view is that it is not this ayah which has the strongest uh, message of hope for sinners. It is the following ayah, following verse, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَذُو مَغْفِرَةٍ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَىٰ ظُلْمِهِمْ And surely your Lord is the Lord of forgiveness for the people against their wrongdoings. Okay, so this was the first ayah I wanted to mention. This is in Surah Al-Zumur. And um, the next ayah, the next ayah that we want, I'm going to discuss is also part of Surah Al-Zumur. Allah SWT mentions the following two ayah. Ayat. So this is a really beautiful ruku that Allah SWT has mentioned, the last ruku of Surah Al-Zumur, okay, especially the last few ayat. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرَىٰ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبَتُ مَفَدْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ And the next verse, وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهُ وَأَوْرَثَنَا الْأَرْضَ نَتَبَوَّهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ فَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ The translation is وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرَةً And those who used to fear their Lord will be led towards Jannah in groups until they reach it while its gates will be already open for them and its keepers will say to them Assalamu alaikum How good are you so enter it to live here forever And the next ayah and they will say Alhamdulillah Wa qalu alhamdulillah Praise belongs to Allah who made his promise come true for us and made us inherit this territory so we can dwell wherever we wish in Jannah نَتَبَوَّأُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيِّثُ نَشَاءُ فَنِعِمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ So excellent is the reward for for those who did good deeds. Okay, so in these two ayahs, we're just going to concentrate on this bit here. نَتَبَوَّأُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيِّثُ نَشَاءُ So obviously, the people of Jannah will be entered into paradise like we like in the ayah uh, preceding. Uh, it's mentioned, They will be taken in groups. The doors of Jannah will already be open. Okay, the keepers of Jannah will welcome them. Salamun alaykum tibtum fadukuluha qalideen. And they, meaning the people of Jannah, inshallah, will mention, will say, and we will be, inshallah, part of them. Waqalu, alhamdulillahi Okay, all praises for Allah. Sadaqana wa'ala, who kept his promise. And then this is the bit which is interesting. Natabawwa'u min al jannati haythu nasha'a. We can dwell wherever, anywhere we wish in Jannah. We can dwell anywhere we wish in Jannah. Okay? So this ayah is telling us that apart from their own special dwelling places, the people of Jannah will be allowed to visit others and take pleasure trips around Jannah. So, meet family and friends, okay, from the dunya, okay, meet your friend circle. Because remember, in Jannah, there are levels. Okay, we don't have time to go into the, the whole um, uh, topic of how many levels there are on how this will all work out, but inshallah some other time. But, نَتَبَوَّعُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ Okay, uh, so basically, a person in Jannah will be allowed to visit others. And then take trips of pleasure, okay, meeting such a person, such a person, a work colleague, a friend, a person that he used to play football with in uh, in in the dunya, a person that he used to engage with, uh, uh, engage with in whatever activity, okay, he will be able to visit these people in general, okay. So, um, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentioned, she mentioned that a person came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is really interesting and really amazing. This person came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, and this was very normal of the Sahaba to do. 
he came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Ya Rasul, Ya Rasulullah, I love you very much, and I keep thinking of you even when I get home. Ya Rasulullah, I love you very dearly with my heart, and I cannot even forget thinking about you even when I get home to my family. Okay, the only time I remain comfortable is when I am back in your company." Until then, I am impatient. I am uncomfortable. But when I, return, um, uh, but when I remember my death, so he further states that when I remember my death and remember your death, <coughs> then it occurs to me that you will be in the higher stations of Jannah, and even if I reach there somehow, <coughs> I'm certain that I shall be on a level much below it. Okay, so, probably, so he's saying to Prophet you will be in a Jannah which is, which is going to be of the highest rank. And myself, even if I manage to get there, I will not be at the same rank as you. My worry is, my worry is, how am I going to see you? How am I going to see you in Jannah? The Holy Prophet وسلم, heard what he said, but he remained silent. He did not give an answer. Until the angel Jibreel والسلام, came to him with the following verse, which is mentioned in the Quran, وَمَن يُتَعِلْ لَهَا وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَرْسُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And those who obey Allah and His Messenger, and those who obey Allah and His Messenger, are with those whom Allah has blessed. فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ so they will be with those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned who are the blessed people. Min al nabiyyin They are the Anbiya. Was Siddiqeen and the Siddiqeen. Okay. Was Shuhada and the Shuhada, the martyrs. Was Salihin and the righteous. Wa Hasuna Ula'ika Rafiqa. And what, what a good company this is. So in this verse, in this verse we just, we just mentioned whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet Allah, um, uh, this verse clearly states okay, that um, a person will be invariably with the prophets and those others mentioned therein and we also understand from this verse that a person who has been entered into paradise he will be given permission to visit those that are in the highest stations of paradise and heaven. You understand? Okay? A person who has entered into paradise, he might be in the lower ranks of paradise, but he will be given permission to visit those that are in the higher ranks of paradise. Okay? The last thing I'm going to mention today, which is uh, about it's not an ayah as such. Um, so these are two ayahs that we mentioned today. قُلِيَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا and then وَقَالُوا uh, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعِلَهِ This is the last, uh, last few ayahs of Surah Al-Zumur Okay, and then we've got uh, Surah Al-Mu'min That uh, will be completed today And Surah Hami Sajda Okay, so this is a point to uh, understand and learn And there is also some virtue to it So from Surah Al-Mu'min in the 24th chapter, okay, starts a series of seven surahs that begin with the isolated letters, Hami. So if you look at the seven <coughs> surahs, starting from Surah Al-Mu'min, they all start with Surah Ham, I mean with the words, with the isolated letters, which are known as the isolated letters, Huruf al Hami. Okay, so Surah Al-Mu'min, Hami, and then Continuing the next surah in uh, the 24th chapter, 24th juz, Hamim Alif Lamim, I mean in Hamim Sajda, also starts with Hamim and then, to, then the 25th surah to Shura, and then the next one and until the last one which starts in the 26th <coughs> chapter, 26th juz. And these are known as Alu Hamim. These are known as Alu Hamim. Yesterday we talked about Surah Al Yasin. What? What did Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say about Surah Al-Yasin? It is the Qalbul Qur'an. Okay? Now, 
about these surahs, which are known as Alu Hami, they are also known as Hawami. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu say, said that uh, these are known as Dibajul Quran, meaning Dibaj means pure silk, pure silk cloth. So these, so is descri a description is that this is these surahs, these seven surahs are, are like silk, okay, in uh, terms of the Quran. So it signifies the embellishment of the Quran. Okay. Uh, another Sahabi has also mentioned that these are known as Arais. Arais with the Ain, sorry. Arais with the Ain, meaning these are the brides. Okay. And uh, Hazrat Ibn Abbas has mentioned that everything has an essence, and the essence of the Quran lies in Al Hami, meaning these seven surahs. And then there's some virtue that has been mentioned as well regarding um, so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, has said that a person who recited the ayah, who recited the ayah of Kursi so Allahu la ilaha illa wa al qayyum and the first three verses of Surah Al-Mu'min so Hami, Tanzeel Al-Kitab Min Allah Al-Aziz Al-Alim, Rafi Al-Dham Wa Qabil Al-Tawb, Shabid Al-Iqab Al-Tawl, La ilaha illa hu ilayhi al-Masir okay he recited until there, early during the day, um, he or she on that day will remain safe from everything that is bad and painful. It has, it has also been reported by Tirmidhi, though one of the reported links in the chain of authority is doubtful. So if a person was to recite Ayatul Kursi and the first <coughs> verses of Surah, uh, Surah Al-Mu'min until Ilayhi Al-Masir, okay, they will remain safe from everything which is bad and painful on that particular day. Inshallah, we will conclude here, and we will continue tomorrow with the 25th juz. Inshallah, we will choose uh, one or two ayat, one or two verses from the 25th juz as we can discuss. And Inshallah, um, we will continue tomorrow. Jazakallah khairan. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Jazakallah khairan.